Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Because of coronavirus, all of our gyms are closed. So our family decided to build a combo rack and a bench so we can squat and bench. And if this thing doesn't end till like June, we might even build a deadlift platform as well. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to build a combo rack and a bench. Let's get started. So we decided to make the bench first. The reason for that is we wanted to see how high the bench was plus the foam so we could get an accurate reading of the rack height. On the left are general measurements, but because I wanted to use some of the materials I had at home, I altered the measurements just by a little. So here are the pieces that I used. I managed to fit all of my 2x4 pieces on two pieces of wood. But if you want a longer bench or a higher bench, then you might need more than two pieces. So first, I started by cutting the foam in half since we got a 22 by 22 inch foam. So we can make it 11 by 44 inch. And my brother and my dad were just cutting the wood. We found that a circular saw works best, but you could use a jigsaw or you could get Home Depot to cut your wood. So a life hack for cutting the wood is after marking it, you align a right angle ruler with the edge of the circular saw and clamp it down. That way, when you saw the wood through, you can lean your circular saw against the straight ruler so your cut will be really straight. And now after cutting all the wood, we can finally start building the bench. So we first attach the long pieces to a 13.5 inch piece for the sides. And we did that for the other side too. We used a small scrap piece of wood to hold the long pieces of fixed distance away. And because my video wasn't so clear, I drew a diagram of what pieces to attach. And it's color coded with the diagram in the beginning. Next, we attach 13.5 inch long pieces to the side of each leg. For each piece that we're attaching, we're using wood glue and screws so it's double the strength. We're also holding scrap pieces of wood to the side so we can make sure they're aligned straight. Next, we attach the 11.5 inch wood to the bottom of the bench, plus the short scrap piece of wood in the middle. And because we use some old drawers for the top plywood, we use some strong ties and some small screws to attach the two pieces of wood together. And then we marked where the plywood should be placed and place it on. And then my dad just gave it a good sand so there weren't any sharp edges. To make sure the foam doesn't move around when we put the vinyl on, I lightly hot glued the foam down. And because we had to connect two pieces of foam together, I just took a needle and thread and sewed the crack together in the middle. To attach the vinyl onto the bench, we turn everything upside down and use the staple gun to staple the vinyl onto the bench. If you don't have a staple gun, 
thumbtacks or small nails would also work. This is how we folded the vinyl for the sides of the bench. And that is it for the bench. If you would like, you can paint the wood as well, but we just left it as the wood color. And now for the combo rack. It doesn't really matter how tall the red piece of wood is, but to get the measurements for the yellow and blue piece of wood, you will want the shortest person in your family to hold a bar at their squat and bench position and measure the distance from the ground to the bar. And the yellow and blue pieces of wood should be a little less than that. As for the orange and green pieces of wood, you will want that to be one inch less than your yellow and blue piece of wood. And as you can tell from the picture, for squatting, the bar will be placed on the orange piece of wood, and for benching, the bar will be placed on the green piece of wood. And to attach each piece of wood together, we use wood glue and three screws per layer. We also attached a few nails to the bottom of the post, the part where it's gonna be in the concrete, so the concrete has something to tug on. Also, it's really important to make sure your posts are level, so we clamped them to a wall so they wouldn't move. And now we just mix the concrete and pour it in. And by the next day, the concrete should be dry enough to use, but it usually takes two to three days for the concrete to fully dry. My dad also used some scrap pieces of wood and two hooks to build something the bar and plates could sit on. The total amount of money for the materials of the bench and the rack ended up being less than $100 and it could be even more or less if you already have materials at home. As for the bar and the plates, we got them from a local fitness store and because they were new, they were not the cheapest but you could get cheaper ones on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp or any of those websites by buying secondhand. And here is the final review. So yeah, thank you for watching my DIY on how to build the common rack and bench. Um, next week's video, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of it and what we can do to make it even better. Bye!